My name is Susan Ashworth. I live alone in this old two-bedroom flat. I rarely go outside. Some would say it's a lonely life, and I guess that's true. But I don't like people's company. Not lately, anyway. I only trust my cats these days, and I will miss them dearly, but they will understand, like they always have. Teacup stays with me till the end. He watches me, as if he knew. Because earlier tonight, I swallowed a whole bunch of pills. They're legal, of course, prescribed by my doctor for my sleeping problems. But I've taken 34 of them, all I could find in the cupboard. And now the room around me spins in a blurry tango as my heart slows down. Any second now, I will be dead. I feel calm. I'm ready for it. I've only got one thing to say now. Thanks for nothing. Goodbye. making that noise. 
Hello? Who's there? Answer me! I can't remember this place. Am I lost? Ah! 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 Ah!
Welcome to my house, Susan Ashworth. I have been waiting for you, my dear. I knew you would turn up one fine day like this. Who... who are you? I have so many names, it's hard to pick one. But, I'm curious, who do you think I am? An old lady who lives in the woods? <laughs> Am I really, Susan? Are you that naive? Or perhaps you're too stubborn to see what I really am. I've waited all that time for you, and now you disappoint me. You've wasted your time waiting. I'm not worth waiting for. I'm just... nobody. And you, to me, you're just a strange old woman, sitting on a porch of her house. And those flowers you're holding, what are they for anyway? I'm going to put some on your coffin, dear. After everyone's gone. I wouldn't bother. I hate flowers. What is this place? This, my dear, is my humble kingdom, and this house is my castle. I rarely invite people in, just like you. I like my solitude. But you are a special guest, and I'm going to make an exception. Me? Special? I can tell you now that there's nothing special about me, lady. Don't bring yourself down, Susan Ashworth. Today, you are my guest of honor. What will happen next? Depends on you, Susan. Inside my house, there are dark hallways that lead to places you don't want to see. But there is also something that will make you want to return to where you came from and cherish every single little breath you take. I'm going to make you an offer, Susan. It's a chance only a fool would refuse. Okay. An offer? What can you offer me? Let's come inside. It's getting cold out here. A lonely seashore. Please don't touch anything, dear. I wasn't going to. You lied to the whole world, Susan. And you lied to yourself. We can talk properly, my dear.
still don't really know who you are. I go by many names. I've never paid much notice to what the living call me. But there is one name the Fallen Ones use when I speak to them. I find it most accurate. The Queen of Maggots. Is that what you are? Why... maggots? Because they feed on what's dead and gone. Dead and gone. I guess that's me. Is there anyone else here? <laughs> Why? I thought you liked being alone. Isn't that why you ran away from everyone? It doesn't matter. I was standing right behind you when you threw away all those photographs, you know? I brushed your hair every night you cried yourself to sleep. I saw everything. I know what you want, but it's not here. It's gone, and it will never, ever come again. Will I be punished for taking my own life? Most people would be, but not you, Susan. You see, I watched you long enough to understand how you feel. I don't expect you to believe me, but I actually have sympathy for you. Who knows, I could be your only friend. The only friend in the whole wide world. So like I said, I'm going to make you an offer. I want to help you. I will give you back your happiness in exchange for a simple task. Your life will change completely. You will be yourself again. And you will soon forget the sadness that has consumed your heart for years. I have no reason to live. Please, just let me go. I tried. I really did. But it's never going to be okay. Who knows, maybe, but one way or the other. This isn't the end of your story. It's only the beginning, my dear. And there are great things waiting for you. Believe me. What do you want me to do? Yes. I think it's time to explain. But where are my manners? They're still in the hall. This is not a place for a serious talk. Follow me to the next room. I'll tell you everything you need to know. What's your offer then? What can you fix that life has destroyed? Susan, death can fix nothing. But though we are both dead, I am not death. I might seem just like a strange old woman to you. But I'm just as powerful as gods. And I chose you, Susan Ashworth. I'll need you to go back and face five people. They're not ordinary people. They're very special. Just like you. Only in a slightly different way. What makes you think I want to go back? I finally did it. I killed myself. That's all I ever wanted. And yet, it turns out to be just another failure. I want this suffering to stop. Dear, dear Susan, you don't realize that the suffering 
never stops, do you? It only gets worse. This place is a passage between the world of the living and the world of the dead. You enter one of these corridors and you never come back. But you don't cease to exist. You remain. I'm a failure. Why did you choose me? Aren't you afraid I will let you down, whatever it is I have to do? Most days, it's enough of a struggle to crawl out of bed. I don't see the point in anything. I just want to disappear. And I hate everyone else because they know how to be happy. Everywhere I turn, there are people filled with hope and will to live. Or people so pitiful, they make me ashamed to be alive. I don't want them. There's nobody there for me. I am alone. I just want to vanish. This is the very reason I chose you, Susan Ashworth. I know how you feel, because I felt like this myself for a very long time. You and me are very much alike. If you succeed, you will never feel broken again. Those five people, who are they? The Parasites. That's what I call them. They don't know each other, but their destinies are bound together. You will have to keep your eyes open and be constantly on guard. Those people will want to get closer to you. They might even pretend they are your friends, but don't let that fool you. They have nothing but cruel intentions. They'll want to hurt you, Susan. They'll want to kill you. As harmless as they might appear, parasites are the evil scum of the earth, and they all deserve to die. Isn't my life bad enough without them? Don't be frightened. You will have a great advantage over them. They don't know that you know. Do you understand what it means? You will become my hunter, serving punishment for their sins. A tool of destruction. A dark angel walking through the river of blood. You find your purpose in life and you see for the first time how satisfying it can be. But how will I recognize them? There isn't a great deal of people in your lonely life, is there, Susan? You will know when you see them. Bring those deceitful bastards in front of me and we'll make them regret for everything they've done. Are you expecting me to... Kill them. No, Susan, I'm expecting you to fight for survival. To do everything you can to defend yourself. I know you're not a murderer. Quite the opposite, actually. You're a good person. But I also know that you don't want to suffer. And those people will want to cause you pain. They won't hesitate. In the end, you might have no choice. Think of it as gardening. If there were weeds among the flowers, you'd pull them out, wouldn't you? You'd get rid of them without thinking twice about it. I'm not really a gardening type, but I see your point. I'm glad. And remember this, you are not the only victim. If you don't stop them, the killing will continue. Innocent people will die. You have the opportunity to make the difference and the chance to save yourself. I can't do this. It's too much. Dealing with criminals is a job for the police, not someone like me. Indeed, you are weak. That's why I have prepared a special gift for you. Immortality. You cannot die, Susan. 
you will always return to life no matter what happens to you. What? This is the last thing I wanted. Please, can't you just let me die? I've made the decision. As long as they are alive, you cannot die. It's blackmail. You can't do that. I'm doing it for your own good. Anyway, you are in no position to bargain with me. You will either go and do what you have to do, or suffer for eternity. Forever unable to find your peace. This all must be just a weird dream. I don't believe you. Susan, see this door here? Let's go inside. I want to show you something that will help you make up your mind. Follow me. Yes, it's you, Susan. Come closer. Say hello. I don't want to look at it. Haven't I had enough yet? That body in the ambulance. Then the forest. But this place is... This is exactly what I was trying to run away from. I don't want to be here. Make it go away. I assumed it would be wise to give you a little taste of the suffering you'd endure. I want you to understand that you can keep going long after you count. It's time to make a decision. The parasites are coming whether you want it or not. You haven't really got much choice. You must stand up for yourself. Can you tell me again about the parasites? Did you not listen, Susan? I'm sorry. It's a lot to take in, you know. Pay attention, Susan. Those people I call the parasites will want to get closer to you. They might even pretend they are your friends. But don't let that fool you. They have nothing but cruel intentions. They want to hurt you, Susan. They want to kill you. As harmless as they might appear, parasites are the evil scum of the earth. And they all deserve to die. That's why I prepared a special gift for you. You cannot die, Susan. You will always return to life, no matter what happens. Bring those deceitful bastards in front of me, and we'll make them regret for everything they've done. I take orders from nobody. I'll do it my way. Don't you understand? There is no other way! Well, I don't know that. Besides, you could be lying to me. How do I know you aren't? I'm no murderer. I don't want to be. I'll find another way without you. What? Look, I appreciate you giving me another chance. See now that I've made a mistake, and I'm ready to try to fix my life. But I really
really don't like what you're saying. If there's one thing I learned in life, it's that people let you down all the time. If I don't rely on myself, I can't rely on anyone else. You fool! You damned arrogant fool! You have no idea what you have just done! But, fine, have it your way. In the end, I will be the one laughing at you. I always am. Um... Who are you to push me around? As far as I know, you're just a crazy old woman. You'll eat those words, Ashworth. Perhaps I will. I don't really care. Just leave me alone. You will regret this! I'm back in the house. Okay, it'll be fine. I don't need her. I'm sure I'll figure out what to do. I can't get through these. What the hell are they anyway? Strange. The flame seems strong and steady, but there is no smoke. They left me no choice, Alice. Maybe one day you'll forgive me. I think that's enough for now. What the? How did I get back here?
Yes, I do enjoy fine art. Thank you for noticing. There's a certain raw beauty to it that modern painters often fail to recreate. I always wanted to be an artist myself, but it'll be a long time before I can call myself that. I often say that patience are my canvas, but my job is more about restoration. Obviously, I look at the damaged human minds and bring them back to their former beauty. I'm sorry, I'm probably boring you. No, it's not that. It's just... It's been a difficult couple of days. I'd really like to go home. Of course, and go home you will. As soon as we've done this little assessment, okay, you probably know how it works. I've read in your file you used to be a nurse. Yes, I know very well how it works. You want to check if I'm nuts? Well, I wouldn't use that expression, obviously. But yes, we have to make sure you're safe and figure out how to help you. Also, as a nurse yourself, you know there's always paperwork involved. These forms won't fill themselves. Honestly, Susan, you have nothing to worry about. This is just a formality. I could tell straight away that you are not nuts. Fine. What would you like to know? I will answer all your questions. Then I'll go home, take a long shower, and catch up on sleep. Wonderful. Let's see then. Where do we begin? She's awake, Doctor. Good evening. It's good to see you awake at last. You're in the Cedar Lake Hospital. My name is Andrew. I'm one of the doctors. Would you confirm your name for me, please? It's Susan Ashworth. Hello, Mrs. Ashworth. I'm glad to see you're all right. You're on the ward now. Your condition is stable. I can see your brain functions just fine and there's no permanent damage of any sort. We've checked your internal organs and they're fine too. You're a very lucky lady, Susan. You might experience extreme tiredness and lethargy for a couple of days, but that should soon pass. I would advise plenty of rest now. The nurses on this ward will take it from here. Please let them know if you need anything. Take care, Mrs. Ashworth. Please, don't try to speak. What did you say? Don't worry, Mrs. Ashworth. Your arm is fine. No, no, no. There was nothing wrong with your arm, darling. Now calm down. Would you like me to get you some water? Let me get you a drink. I'll be back in a second. I'm sorry, Susan. Did I wake you? I have to take your blood pressure. Two seconds and I'm gone. My name is Liz, by the way. I... I'm sorry. I know this isn't very nice. Believe me, I hate waking people up just for this. But being a nuisance is part of my stupid job, unfortunately. Oof, I hate this place. Tell you what, Susan. Can I call you Susan? So anyway, I shouldn't say it, but... You know I'm going to, anyway. You are so lucky. It's crazy. You, doing what you've done, and her, walking in, seeing what she saw. That was a chance. One in a million. I'm not making any sense again, am I? I'm tired. They're working us to death here, you know. Modern day slavery. One day I'll tell them what I really think. I swear I will. Ah, and here it is. You've got the blood pressure of an 18-year-old. Just wanted to say you're lucky, I think. And that I hope you've changed your mind about some things. 
got to go, but I'll see you later. You take care, sweetheart, yeah? Bad dream. Yeah, a really bad one. I knew it. I could see as soon as I came in the room that you were having a nightmare. I guess I shouldn't have woken you up. What was it about? I was burnt alive. Actually, it reminds me of something that happened the other day. There was this woman on the emergency unit, and she really wanted to smoke, you know? But they wouldn't let her, of course. She wasn't well at all, not just injured, but not right in the head. She was on 10 litres of oxygen through the face mask. She had to stay in bed, she was told. But she wouldn't listen, of course, and as soon as they'd left, she lit up a fag. The whole room went up in flames, and so did she. I guess you didn't really want to know that, did you? That's just me and my big gob. Typical. I never know when to shut up. What happened to me? Well, how much do you remember? I... I took some pills. And I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm. And then... All of a sudden, I was on the field of barley. It was great at first. I felt happy. I was free. But it soon got worse. There was this tunnel, but there was no light at the end of it. Only darkness. Then I got lost in the woods. There was my dead body hanged on the tree, a burning car, and a crow, and a deer. I heard something behind the trees, but I didn't dare to look. Then I found the house. The old woman who lived there, I think she was death. Or maybe she was the devil, I'm not sure. She said they call her the Queen of Maggots. She said I should go back gave me another chance. And so, here I am. Weird dream, eh? Maybe it wasn't a dream. I really believe in that sort of stuff. It's not impossible. It felt real, but it was just a dream. Can you now tell me who found me and what happened? Well, your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My daughter? Yes. Why? Why do you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? I don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But why would she do that? How should I know? I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied? It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Sorry. How long have I been here? I was told you arrived at the hospital at 7 in the evening. You had a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. They had to resuscitate you. Your heart stopped beating for nearly a minute, but they managed to bring you back. You went to the intensive care unit, where they gave you a dose of antidote and pumped your stomach. As soon as your condition was stable, they brought you on this ward. It's called Dime Ward. 
I call it die ward because all the patients who come here want to die. It's a suicide watch unit. That's why it's so strict. You have to be careful. Nurses here are trigger happy with the sedatives. When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. Look, I shouldn't say that, but you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you. And he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. Tell me more about this Dr. X. His name is Xavier Zellman, but everyone just calls him Dr. X. He comes on the ward often, usually late in the afternoon or in the evening. I personally really like him, but you hear all sorts of stories in a place like this, you know. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is he's been very friendly and supportive. Some doctors won't even say hello to you, but Dr. X usually stops and asks how I am. He knows I have some problems. He can see I'm not happy here. He actually offered me some free weekly sessions. I think I might take him up on his offer. What are they saying about him? Oh yeah, they say he's a big flirt. Nurses, cleaners, patients. He doesn't care. As long as they're wearing a skirt. One girl I knew. Linda. I heard they had an affair. Stupid girl. Well, she left. And I never saw her again. Now why do you think that is? Dr. X got her knocked up. They covered it up and quietly got rid of her. Probably paid her some money. I don't know how these things work, but it must have been enough to shut her up. I bet he'll be more careful now. But I can't really say a bad word about him, personally. Well, one thing. Maybe. Don't laugh, okay? He's got a weird smell. What do you mean? He smells... funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad aftershave. Or maybe it's something he eats. Oh. Thanks for the warning. I'll try not to get too close to him. Now that I think about it, there's something else too. I'll tell you this, Susan. He starts talking to you, and you just... Open up and tell him everything. It's very odd. I don't exactly hide things from people, but he got some really private stuff out of me. Really private. You know what I mean? Things I wouldn't tell my mother about. And we haven't even started those sessions yet. So, be prepared for that. Sure. But it's a bit too late for me to hide how I feel now anyway. I think I made it very clear when I swallowed those pills. Did you see this daughter of mine? No, sorry Susan. Apparently she came in the ambulance with you. But then she remembered something and had to go. I think someone mentioned she went in quite a hurry. Of course she did. She was worried I'd ask her what she was doing in my flat. Um, saving your life? Do I really have to give her a benefit of the doubt just because of that? One would assume so. That girl is a hero. Maybe real heroes always leave before their identity is revealed. Or she was a burglar, attempting to steal from me. Hmm. That's a possibility too. Have you got anything very precious in your flat? Maybe. Tell me something more about yourself. Me? I'm a nobody. I'm just a hard-working girl. We all have to pay our bills somehow, right? I rent a room not far from here. There are two other girls living in the house. One is an auxiliary nurse, like me. She's always sick. The other one is a stripper. At least I think so. She's never home at night. Maybe she works at night, like you. Yeah, but I don't leave for work wearing red stockings and heels, do I? No, you're right. 
You're a real nurse, not some man's fantasy of one. I used to do all that for my boyfriend. You know, dress up as a sexy nurse and all. Well, I did it just once, really. He didn't like it that much. He didn't like me that much either. Broke up with me last Valentine's Day. Of all the days, he chose that one, eh? He never told me why, but I don't care anymore. Tell me more about this Dr. X. His name is Xavier Zellman, but everyone just calls him Dr. X. He comes on the ward often, usually late in the afternoon or in the evening. I personally really like him, but you hear all sorts of stories in a place like this, you know. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is he's been very friendly and supportive. Some doctors won't even say hello to you. But Dr. X usually stops and asks how I am. He knows I have some problems. He can see I'm not happy here. He actually offered me some free weekly sessions. I think I might take him up on his offer. What are they saying about him? Oh yeah, they say he's a big flirt. Nurses, cleaners, patients. He doesn't care, as long as they're wearing a skirt. One girl I knew, Linda. I heard they had an affair. Stupid girl. Well, she left, and I never saw her again. Now why do you think that is? Dr. X got her knocked up. They covered it up and quietly got rid of her. Probably paid her some money. I don't know how these things work, but it must have been enough to shut her up. I bet he'll be more careful now. But I can't really say a bad word about him, personally. Well, one thing. Maybe. Don't laugh, okay? He's got a weird smell. What do you mean? He smells... funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad aftershave. Or maybe it's something he eats. Oh. Thanks for the warning. I'll try not to get too close to him. Now that I think about it, there's something else too. I'll tell you this, Susan. He starts talking to you, and you just open up and tell him everything. It's very odd. I don't exactly hide things from people, but he got some really private stuff out of me. Really private. You know what I mean? Things I wouldn't tell my mother about. And we haven't even started those sessions yet. So, be prepared for that. Sure. But it's a bit too late for me to hide how I feel now anyway. I think I made it very clear when I swallowed those pills. I'm tired. Let me sleep now. Fine. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? You don't. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. Remember what I said. Dreams are just dreams. But when they turn into nightmares, it's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up. Right? We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. I want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now, and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your parents. When you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him?
I was brought up without a father. I understand he wasn't there when you were growing up. Can you tell me why? What happened to him? He... died in an accident. I'm not sure what exactly happened. All I know is that it was a car crash. I was told he died instantly. Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? I can't complain. My mum was great. She did her best to make up for the loss of my father. Me and her, we were like best friends. Like soulmates. We did everything together. She passed away seven years ago. Her forever broken heart finally gave up. But she did give me a wonderful childhood, despite everything that happened. I will always love her for that. Okay, I'm beginning to get a better picture. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes and we will talk about something else. I need to get out of this place. I hate hospitals. Besides, I really want to go home and forget all about this.